Hey my friends, welcome back to a new video today. I have a special message for everyone who feel a bit out of balance, like a lack of sparkle, you know, that sense when we feel inspired and we feel motivated to move and we feel like this is the time to create something beautiful. So if you feel like that, this video is for you. Maybe you've noticed number 222 on the thumbnail. So in numerology, this is a sign of balance. This is a sign of harmony. And usually when we see that number, it can remind us of the importance of balance. Or maybe you can recognize that you're out of balance and you start seeing this kind of synchronicity. So it's not so much of the importance of what it means, but more of the sign that uh, it's time to check up your uh, lifestyle a little bit, your routines a little bit. How do you feel? And how are you? Truly, right at this moment, how are you? To really be honest with yourself. How are you doing? How are you at this point of life? And why it is important? It's important because when you become really honest with yourself, you can find the solutions to what you're dealing with. And this is a truly important realization, a solution to what am I dealing with? Because people are used to see everything as a problem or a mistake or a challenge or a roadblock. But we need to start looking on life as seeing the solutions, right? Of course, we don't want to because we feel unmotivated. We feel lazy and we only feel lazy because we don't want to do anything. So we see life works so interestingly. When we know that we need to take action, we don't feel like taking action. But if we take action, we will start to feel like we want to take more action, right? So this is so interesting. And maybe you've noticed right now that you are growing internally so much that most of the things outside of you don't fit you anymore. So what it means? It means that maybe the way our environment is right now is not fitting anymore to our internal sensations, internal feeling, internal drive, which means it's time to update it a little bit. And that's why you are craving changes in your life. So don't hesitate on making the changes that you wish to see. When your environment is not in sync with you, Clean it up, change it and update it in a way that will reflect your growth. So, you know, when the plant is growing, at some point you need to change its pot. Just that you are not growing bigger, but wiser. Your pot is an environment in which you spend most of your time. And it's time to adjust it to your growth, to your internal growth to your internal expansion of your knowledge, of your wisdom, of your energy. Not to make it bigger, but to make it more pleasant. So, what it means? It means that your environment should reflect um, sacredness that you feel within yourself, about yourself. You are a sacred being here on a mission to expand yourself, to acknowledge yourself, to become more aware of yourself. And if your environment is not supporting that mission, it means you will feel blocked by your environment. And because you've grown so much and you've changed so much and you are constantly growing and evolving, it means that your environment should reflect that growth and evolution. So clean it up, refresh it, Make sure that you're letting some fresh air into the room in which you're spending most of your time. Make sure that it's cleaned, because clean environment will support um, cleaning of your heart. You know, many monks are using the practice of cleaning their environment as a demonstration of cleaning their hearts. 
You know, every time we take care of our environment, we also take care of our inner space. Have you noticed that every time you, you start cleaning and taking care of the space you're living in, you also recognize many new realizations about yourself? So often when we feel uninspired and unmotivated, it's because we need some refreshment in the place where we are living. But not a refreshment like we need to buy something new. That's an easy step. We need to make the hardest step. Because when it comes to refreshments, it comes to the hardest things, to the things we are avoiding doing. Those are the real refreshments. When we buy something new, it's more like a reward. But we need the real refreshment, which means that we need to move something. That is a huge change. If we're doing that con consistently, if we're taking care of our environment, we will feel much better and we'll stay in a greater balance because we need to understand that our environment is nothing else but an extension of ourselves. When you see around you, you can also see how you are within you. So make sure that where you're living, when you look around you, that it will be a pleasant place to be. Make sure that it will reflect who you want to be, right? Who you want to become. That's why people put lovely quotes on their walls. They put beautiful art on their walls. If you feel inspired, you can find my art in my Etsy shop. I draw my passion. And you can put it into your walls, onto your walls, if you feel inspired to do that. So make sure that the place you're living is a reflection of your inner peace, of your inner harmony, of your inner beauty. Because if it is not a reflection of that, it means that also within you there's a lot of things to, to refresh, to clean up. It starts in your mind. Many thoughts that are not serving you. Your mind may be poisoned. So what it means... When our minds are poisoned, it puts us out of balance. It means that we've allowed too many sources to interact with us. To, we've allowed ourselves to consume too much of too many information, <laughs> too much of information from too many different sources. Which is not good on a long run because suddenly we recognize that um, we can't comprehend everything at the same time that's where we need to ask ourselves are we staying focused to what's important to us if you feel uninspired unmotivated if you feel without a spark have you spent too much time watching too many different things that's where you've lost connection with yourself because at the first place there is you at the first place you need to know that you exist that is the purest state of awareness, that you know that you exist. The purest state of awareness. I know I'm here. This is the purest state. When you know you're here, that you, when you know that you exist, you're in the purest state of being. As soon as you start saying, oh, I'm like this, I'm like that, I'm, oh, this is happening to me, oh, well, you're not in the pure state anymore. You're not, oh, I exist. You start to define yourself with all different labels, thoughts, all those thoughts experience, uh, awaken emotions, and suddenly you think and feel, and suddenly you find yourself in a certain state of being. But when you start your day with a certain practice that reminds you that you exist, your existence matter. What it means. When your existence matter, you will make sure that you make the best out of it. The most out of it. And from that state, you will feel inspired to do something. When you don't appreciate your existence, you start looking outside of you for something that will inspire you. And for a certain period of time, it may work. But usually, at some point, you will have 
an overdose of information and suddenly nothing will inspire you anymore. So when you feel uninspired, without a spark, you need declutter. You need to declutter your mind. To get back into the point of awareness where you know that you exist. And it doesn't mean that you say to yourself, I exist and things will shift. It's not like that. It's like getting into experience of yourself, getting to experience yourself, becoming yourself. Like that's why we meditate, to remind ourselves who we are. So when we open our eyes, that we can stay that true, pure version of us. Because we've been so poisoned to think certain way, to behave certain way, to talk certain way. That we've, lost, that we've lost ourselves in all those different programs of how we should be. And authenticity then comes from that point of just being you. Being aware that you exist. Right? Being aware that you exist. So the first thing that can help you to get into that state is firstly to acknowledge your present state from your inner quietness. So many people say, well, I'm unmotivated. I feel stuck. Nothing is changing in my life, which is obviously not true. Those are weak explanations of what's happening, actually. And what we need to do, we need to find a greater explanation of where we are, how we are, and what's going on. And we can only experience that in inner quietness. So when we get into a meditative state, it can happen in meditation, but it can also happen in a walk, when we go for a walk into nature. And often when we go for a walk into nature, we may start overthinking, and again we lose that connection. But in our quietness is, is living below the surface of your thoughts, which means that at some point you will need to tap below the thoughts. And the easiest way to, to get below the thoughts is to declutter yourself from all the sources of information for a certain period of time. You don't need to scroll on your phone all the time. You don't need to do that. You don't need to wa watch videos all the time. You don't need that. You don't need to listen something all the time. Because that's how you get away from yourself. To get in touch with yourself. You need to be there for yourself, right? So, acknowledge your present state from inner quietness. Well, for me, the easiest way to do that is to sit down to be in quietness, to focus on the empty space within my body. Like, just recognizing my body as an empty space. As my physical body would be like a shell. And within that physical body, there's empty space. I'm not focusing on my organs or anything, I focus just on the empty space. And more I'm focusing on that empty space, more quiet my mind becomes. And once I feel it, once it becomes completely quiet, I experience peace. I experience that pleasant state of tranquility. And when I start to observe my life from that state, I see things clearly. I see, well, I should do something, but I'm not doing it. I know why I'm not doing it. I'm avoiding it because it may be unpleasant. It may be hard. Like there's a project, like there's an unfinished project and I'm avoiding it because I don't know where to start or because it's kind of boring to do and that's why I'm avoiding it. But now when I know what's the problem, I can face with that. I can write it down so I will not forget it and as soon as I will have time, I will work on that project. And usually when I do that, I finish that project really fast and I notice, well, it was not so boring. What was boring was the start, but after five minutes, you develop that momentum and suddenly things starts flowing. 
and that is the beauty of recognizing purity and clarity of your present state of being. That is something truly important. Most people are not doing that because they just don't take time for that. But you see, this is our inner mechanism, our inner wisdom that helps us to recognize what we're dealing with and how to find the greatest and and most profound possible solution for what we are dealing with. That's why I said at the beginning, number 222 is a great sign, a symbol, a reminder to take your life on to the next level. And for that you need clarity. So recognize if there's something in your life you should do, but you're not doing it. And find out why. Why you're not doing that. Really, really powerful. And of course, to stay in that center, to stay in that balance, we need some strong daily routines that can help us to stay in that state. I call it the state of the creator. Because you can only be creative and productive when you are in the state of the creator. And this is the conscious state. When you are in the conscious state, when you are conscious about yourself, about what you want to do, you are completely aware. And this is the state of the creator. If you want to create, you need to be in the state of the creator. And for that, we need some daily routines that will plug us out of those automatic behaviors. So what I do, I'm doing, for, I'm doing daily call therapies, and it doesn't mean that you should do it. But it means if you find something that will pull you out of your automatic behaviors, those are DNA memories. It's not just that you're lazy. It's coming from your past, from your ancestors, from those habitual patterns that have been programmed inside of your DNA that are controlling you. And the only way to overcome those programs is to pull yourself out of those automatic behaviors so we can design new ones, more conscious ones. Which means that you need to do something that will pull you out. Meditation is a great practice. But it needs to be the right one that will pull you out. Like, for example, if you are familiar with meditations of Dr. Joe Dispenza, I'm saying his meditations uh, are really powerful because they are really intense. And he designed them the way that they are intense. With the music, with the way he expressed himself. And I've tried many different meditations, but his are by by far the most powerful because of intensity because we are so deeply rooted in those unconscious programs that we don't even know we are rooted in them we don't even know 95 percent of a day we don't know what we are doing and why we are doing those things that's why we need a strong and intense practice that will pull us out of that out of those programs so we can face with the discomf discomfort so we can face with our fears and we can actually do what we've come here to do right so i love to do cold therapies because they help me to deal with the discomfort to deal with the pain i'm so afraid of the cold that's why i go into the cold water but every time i get out I experience that rush of creative energy. In science, they say in brain, uh, after cold exposure, your brain starts producing a strong dose of dopamine. Like you would take a drug, like you would take an ecstasy or something like that. A strong rush of adrenaline. And you can use it for creating and when you become really, it will make you really conscious. It will make you really present, really focused. That's where you notice how much unconscious you've been before. In that state of, of consciousness, 
You can then decide, okay, what you truly want to do with your life. At the beginning it's hard, but eventually we become creators. We become great programmers. We start redesigning our lives. And we start to consciously design, well, if right now I want to be motivated and inspired and have that spark for life, for creating, I want to be in control of that. And in order to be in control of that, you need to be conscious, right? You can't be in a certain habit that's not serving you and hope that those things will happen. You see, we are living in a time of individual awakening where each individual becomes aware of that power that's sleeping within you. It's like a sleeping giant living within you. Sleeping. And every time you plug yourself from those automatic behaviors, you become aware, oh, that's how powerful I am. Let's make something beautiful in this world. The reason that the world is hurting so much and Mother Gaia is hurting so much because of our unconscious behaviors is because, not because we intentionally do things that harm others, because we do them unconsciously unintentionally, out of our pain, sorrow, suffering, because we don't know how to be different, like how to be more kind, more aware, more conscious. And a solution is to plug ourselves out of those unconscious states so we can become more aware, so we can notice what we are doing, so we can see the solutions to what before were the problems, right? And that's what will put you back into balance. So this is really powerful and that's what helps me to stay inspired every single day, to stay motivated and to have that spark to create something beautiful every single day. Because, you see, so many people are so deeply lost that we need to feel inspired every single day, so we can bring out what's within us, so we can bring that beautiful light, your beautiful colors of your soul to this world, because people need you. So you need to, like, that's something really good you can do for yourself, and eventually for the world around you. So... The last thing I also want to mention here, something that helps me as well, is to do things differently. Here and there, you know, if um, something creative becomes a routine, we pull creativity out of it. It, like, we drain creativity out of it. So it becomes like a routine and not so much like a creative process. So sometimes I just like to change the space where I'm doing whatever. Um, like, for example, I just go to a, a, a bar or like a coffee, coffee place um, and I do things there, I write there, I, I read my books there or something like that. I like to change the space a little bit because new space has new energy, different energy. And sometimes as uh, creative people, we need that. So... If you feel like your life has become a routine and nothing inspires you anymore, try to do things that you're doing at different places. If you can, ha if you can in your house, change some uh, places where you're doing things that you're doing. Just try it out a little bit. Or go into nature if you can, if the weather is right, if you know temp temperatures are okay. Try it out like painting, drawing outside, or whatever you do. This is really helpful, because when we change the space, the environment, we change the energy. And that's how we step outside of our familiar box. So we recognize that we've been living in a box. Because most of the time we don't know that we're living in a box. Until we step outside of it and we notice, well, it's time to change that box a little bit. Or maybe it's time to break its walls so we can be free, right? So this is it for today. How to balance yourself 
or how to get in power that how to tap into the power that was always within you to get inspired to get that sparkle for life back again and this is it i'm sending you lots of love blessings and power have a beautiful day until next time one love